Now then everyone, this is the Wedding Mavericks podcast, a podcast for wedding photographers and videographers who want to build successful and sustainable businesses. My name's Lindsay and I'm joined by Jules and in this episode we are discussing FOMO and how to balance your business with life. Okay, so in last week's episode, we were talking about bad experiences and how that can affect our creativity and our motivation for for what we do. And we've actually received some great feedback in response to that episode. So thank you very much for those of you that have reached out um, and got in touch with us about that. Um, I guess, you know, in some ways, it's it's a shame really to to hear that others have have had similar experiences quite recently. Um, But... It was good to know that um, kind of we'd able to, we've been able to sort of connect with people in, in, in that respect. And um, it's not just us. And for you, just knowing that it's not just you, you know, this is something that we we all seem to kind of, we're getting a murmur of awe, as, as those of you have, have said when you've reached out, we're actually experiencing that this year. There's been a, a, a definite change in how people or, or how clients um have sort of behaved i guess yeah and if we don't know why do we but no. we can't we can't say why but we c- we could look at you know the the situation post pandemic i think we we mentioned this mm. briefly in the in the episode last week i think you can look at the the situation post pandemic and h- how people had more time to to think about their wedding mm. and kind of plan it almost like get to a point where they were obsessing over certain elements of it being yeah. perfect because it had to wait so overthinking long it. overthinking it yeah. you know and and um maybe maybe then there were other pressures as well maybe, you know i don't know it's it's, it's hard isn't it and I, yeah. I think yeah i think we do weddings week in week out and um as, as we all do and and it's it's different you you see things in a different way mm. and you kind of it'd be it'd be good wouldn't it if we could all like write a book or <laughs> give um give a little give a little manual to people about how how to actually enjoy your wedding yeah you know and obviously everybody's different so that's just, you can't, there's no one size fits all but yeah. definitely from my experience people who enjoy their weddings mm. they enjoy the wedding day they they, they set out to not create a spectacle. They set out to create something that feels like them and they want to share this event with the guests. Yeah. And with the person that they're marrying. You know, they want to they want that that intimate intimate intimate, mm-hmm. you know, kind of like we we're we we're, we're getting together, mm. this is official. Mm. We're, you know, showcasing the fact that we want to be with each other and our love and then we're having a great time with all the people we care mm-hmm. about. Yeah. Whereas if you, if it's all about things and if, it's, if, you, if you've got loads of money, if you're minted and you want to have nice things, that's great too. Mm-hmm. But I think that that's a secondary thing, Yeah. you know? So like, if you don't really have, if, if you don't really have the means to have the, the nice things, the nice things aren't really that important. The nice things are just good if you can afford it. Yeah. So I'm proper rambling here. Think, Talk no, some that's, that, that's all right. I think r- really it kind of, you, you know, thank you for those of you that, that did reach out because it actually reassured us that we weren't kind of quite isolated uh, in, in what had happened. We weren't alone in what had happened. Um, you know, we're not glad it's happened to those to, to other people. But again, we hope that perhaps you could take some of that same feeling away and understanding that there's definitely been a change in you know the tide has changed in terms of uh where some clients have maybe been coming from this year and and just if you have questioned why is this happening to you please just feel reassured that obviously that there has been a difference in in people's um frame of mind should we say when it comes to their wedding yeah. um but as we we sort of talked about last week it's it's important not to dwell on that and it's important to think about 
you know, definitely there's a place for self-reflection to see if there are improvements that can be made, but not to, to dwell on that and certainly not allow that to impact your creativity and your sort of motivation going forward. And, let, and let's hope that that was a, you know, last year, you know, was, or what we've experienced post-pandemic was, was a blip that will, just like... I'm seeing a lot of stuff, and we might talk about this in a future episode uh, of people talking about how they've how they've noticed differences with inquiries and bookings, and just how people are responding to 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 your communications. Mm. Like I've just read a post on a on a Facebook group that's that's basically going about like being ghosted after send you know after they've already confirmed mm-hmm. they're gonna they're gonna book and then and then ghosting them after they've sent out like a booking form and basically are expecting them to book mm. um which is a bit odd and and it, you know I, I can we'll talk about that on another episode because it's going to go down a, a different path if i start talking about that but I, I i can i don't see it as a trend but i have noticed it with a, a few clients where they've done something that you really f- felt was confusing you know um, and we'll talk about that in another in another thing yeah. but yeah um so, so yeah this week we um we thought we would kind of follow on from what we discussed last week and have a, a think about FOMO, the fear of missing out, but also how um, that can perhaps impact our sort of thought processes and, and the, the sort of way in which we conduct our business when it comes to um, balancing work with life, yeah. balancing your business with life. You know, what's what are the drivers for you do you have FOMO? Do you allow that to to be the art, overarching sort of influence in the decisions that you make about your business? What sort of things, Jules, do you think um, people in our industry experience FOMO with then? Um, well, I think I think it's very difficult in in life in general. You know, I think we can all be guilty of right. If you if you if you're fairly young listening to this, you you might not be able to appreciate the the picture I'm about to paint. But certainly when I was growing up as a kid, I didn't know what most people were doing, mm-hmm. right? So, you know, if I was at school and I went on a summer holidays, um, six week summer holidays from school, and I didn't, you know, I didn't really have any way to keep in touch with people other than the landline. Right, so there's no mobile phone, there's no internet. So the only thing I know is, is you know, if somebody's told me that they're doing something, they're going on holiday, mm-hmm. um, or, you know, it, if I've got, like, my closest friends, I've got their landline numbers so I can get in touch with them for, like, like ringing their mum and dad's house phone. Mm-hmm. But other than that, you know, you know, and then physically arranging to meet up with people, which, again, would have to be done via the house phone, you didn't really have any way of knowing what people were getting up to. So whatever you were doing, that was your little world. Mm -hmm. And you knew what you were doing. And the only way you actually found out that people had had a better time than you through the (laughs) summer holidays, or they'd done something and you'd not been part of it, was when you went back to school. Yeah? Yeah. And that was obviously when you were a kid. But it was the same as, as when you were growing up and becoming an adult. Because even though like by then we've got mobile phones... People are plastering it all over the internet all the time. You know, it was a case of you, you, you were either there or you found out about it later. So you couldn't really have a fear of missing out back then, could you? No. Whereas now, you know, even as a grown adult, I can go on social media and I can see people, my friends or acquaintances, uh, you know, maybe people like that you don't even really care about, but you've you've got them as your friends or whatever because you used to go to school or whatever with them. You see mm. people having this amazing time and mm. doing all these amazing things. And even though you shouldn't really care, it can spark this little thing off in your mind of like, well, why aren't I got that car? Or why aren't I going on that holiday? Or why aren't I living in that house? And even if you don't want it to, it's almost like a... It's almost involuntary, don't you think? Mm. Even if you're not like, if you don't think of yourself as like a jealous person or, you know, you're not a materialistic person or whatever, because I don't think of myself as those two things, but you can still see these things and it can still spark this involuntary thing off in you. So 
I think we're all surrounded by that all of the time now. And people will feel it about about you. You know, people will feel it about us. They'll, they'll, they might see, oh, well, because whenever I bump into someone, they always go, oh, you know, I've been following you, you know, with your business, or you look to be doing really well. And they kind of say it in this way where it's like, they're kind of saying it in this like, well done, but they're also saying it in this like envious type way. This is usually people that I probably used to work with or something that hate their job. And I just think it's really difficult because I think, well, you don't actually know what it's, what's going on behind closed doors. Is that really, does it look that amazing? Like what, you know? Yeah. And so that, that I think I've, I've obviously gone off track from business life a little bit there, but I'm just trying to put it into context of like our, everybody's entire lives. Uh, there's fear of missing out in everybody's life because it's all shoved in your face. Mm. Whereas 20, 30 years ago, nobody knew about any of this stuff nobody cared nobody cared that they weren't doing this thing or they weren't didn't have this thing because nobody even knew that you had it or you'd done it or you'd been there um and it's reprogrammed everyone's lives really the social media yeah and i think then to kind of so that's that's kind of personal crossing over into you know we know full well what a, a a massive um tool for us and a massive part that social media plays in the way that we go about business so then to kind of just add on to that from a business perspective one of the things that does get talked about a lot of the time is this kind of culture almost of number of bookings yeah got more bookings made more money more weddings went to this place better weddings went to this place went to that place And every, you know, there's there's a lot of people that are they're kind of kind of doing that. Would you call that flexing? Would you just call that, you know? Yeah, but now it's almost like you have to flex a little bit well, because that's part go. of the game. The yeah. part of the game is like you're almost saying, "Look at me." Now, whether you're doing that for the purpose of your potential couples clients, mm-hmm. because you're saying, "I'm busy," I'm doing awesome stuff. I must be a really good photographer or videographer, book me. Whether you're doing it for that or whether you're in the education, you're trying to get into the education space, so you're trying to show other photographers and videographers what, you know, mm-hmm. fucking champ you are, <laughs> right? If you, you know, it, and it, it's built into the the industry in that way. It's, it's, and it's not just photographers and videographers, it's, it's the entire industry, everybody, like from, you know, planners, florists, you know, bands, venues, everybody. And and that's why we're all, we're all, I don't think I'm doing it, but I feel like I've, I've got to start doing it. And that's probably part of this conversation is got to start almost look all the time, filming content, putting it out there because it's like, look, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. I'm doing it because everybody's mm. doing it, doing it, doing it mm. and showing it and showing it and showing it. Yeah. Um, And that can be hard to, as a, as somebody absorbing that, yeah. if you're not doing it, doing it, showing it, showing it, or mm. feel like you can't do it, do it, do it, show it, show it. Because mm-hmm. you influence, because you, you you see what others are doing, don't you? You'll have, you know, you, you will have your own goals when it comes to your marketing and trying to convert your leads into bookings. You will have your own strategies, the way in which you will use either social media platforms, paid ads, whatever it is, however it is that you're generating business for yourself, you will have methods. Yeah. But I guarantee that every single one of us, I can't guarantee it, can I, but (laughs) I expect that every single one of us at some point is feeling this layer of pressure from our own peers, yeah, even indirectly people, it might be people from that our own you, peers that you know that you kind of like work alongside. Sometimes yeah. it could be people that you admire. It could be people that you don't even like. You could, it could be people that you know. Maybe mm-hmm. you don't like them for a good reason. Maybe you don't like them because you've watched everything that they're doing on social media and it just pisses you off because you're like, why are they always doing this? Why are they always saying that? Mm-hmm. And you're just absorbing it all the time. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of pressure, and I think it can really kind of send your head in a bit of a spin, and you you're like, it, it can make you 
think irrationally and I think it can make yeah. you um like you know you mess mess with your priorities and what you actually think you know and like how, how do you how do you cram everything in mm. you you can't you might start asking yourself how do you cram everything in? how are you supposed to be good at it all how are you supposed to achieve the balance that you're wanting to achieve because yeah. you, you can't keep up with all this you know I think when we like we've talked about workflows before and I think that when you're in the midst of peak season the 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 extra layers that having to create the additional resources that you were going to use on social media platforms or generally as marketing material for yourself it's just creating extra work it's adding to the workload mm. And, and I think, you know, you, you'd be the first one to, to say that we go, we go through these peaks and drops and you net right now are trying to very, it's trying to put lots of effort into creating social media content. So, you know, it's almost like you need two mindsets in one respect. You need the mindset of the professional photographer, videographer, who's looking at creating those memories for your clients, i.e. the job you were hired to do. And you need to be, particularly with the film, you need to be in a particular mindset to be able to create the film that you're making for them. Absolutely, yeah. Down to the visuals, um, down to the music, then share that with them. But out of that, you've then got to put this other thinking cap on that's geared up towards not always for the couple, some, 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 well, some couples do want the real version, don't they, so that they can use it themselves on social media. But you've got to put this extra thinking cap on that's thinking, right, how can I now use what I've just created that's really meaningful, heartfelt, unique for that couple? And how can I completely <laughs> mash that up into a 60-second reel or something? for my own marketing purposes. Yeah. When given the choice, is this how I would be tra wanting to market to spend, myself? Is this how I'd be able to, to spend, spend my the time? time? Yeah, because the thing is that that's the that's that, that's the main thing. What you want to spend your time on is the job that you got paid to do. Now, nobody has a problem with spending time on marketing and it's it's a function of running a small business and you should spend some time on marketing, but you know, the proportion of time that you have to spend on making these things that, you know, aren't really for the purpose that you, you know, it's not really your job. And it, it's almost like if you don't do it, you are, you know, and whether it's, whether it's, it could be you just pull in some stills, which isn't going to take you very long, but it could be just pulling some stills from, you know, your, your footage to put as photos on social media. By the way, you know, I'm so confused about what is actually the right thing at the moment because I can I can I spent some time putting a, a reel together using a trending song the other day and it did absolute shite, right? <laughs> Yet I can put some photos on in like a carousel that aren't supposed you know photos aren't supposed to be doing as well as video and the photos will do miles better. And I'm just talking about photos of a couple. I'm not talking about. So I've put I've spent time doing this reel, mm. which is just utter, like, just it's, uh, you know. Now I'm a video. I, I my primary thing is video editing and and video creation, but I hate. I don't want to do it in Instagram shitty app. So yeah, I, I've put this reel together better anyway. So, but what is actually the thing anymore? And I've gone off track a bit. What were we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> Just saying with it, how basically when it comes to sort of social media, from your business's perspective, the fear of missing out is not keeping up with that kind of trend of whether it's reels, whether it's using a trending song in either, your, you know, a carousel of images or a video that you put together, but you're kind of seeing your industry peers do the same thing. So it, it's, you, you're kind of questioning, okay, how much is this fear of me not doing the same as all of those people actually now influencing and impacting 
what my predetermined kind of strategy for this year for marketing, if you like, or my predetermined yeah. goals, how's that, is that being skewed so much and influenced so much just because I've got FOMO? Mm. And if it is, what impact is that having on your business? Is it having a positive one? And you're actually thinking, oh, actually I need to get on board with this because it's the way to go because now I'm being seen and now I'm keeping up with the Joneses. Yeah. Or is it not? As you get into the busier season, is it just far too labour intensive? And I think it and I think it kind of is. And and what I what I've tried to do in these last few weeks is is be like, right, I need a strategy for when we go to weddings, you know, then what do I create at the back end of it? Mm. Right. And then I also and, and we're doing such such a, a lower volume this year, as this is another thing, it's probably a completely different topic, but we're doing such a lower volume this year of weddings compared to what we've done in the past few years. And that's on purpose. It's because we've managed to get a price higher. We don't have to do as many, but that impacts how much content you're going to create at the back end. So then you're thinking, well, I need to be able to have regular content. I'm going to have to use old content slash. I'm going to have to create more content assets per wedding to be able to put things mm-hmm. out regularly. If that's part of my marketing strategy. Um, so it, it it's kind of like I'm trying to work that out at the moment and I'm also like I had this whole idea of like making new pieces of content as marketing things and I've just realized I can't do it I haven't got time or I haven't got the energy or the enthusiasm to do it mm. so I'm like right I'm just going to go back to what I used to do which is just show my work you know it might be old work but to be fair We've got tons of old work that we have never shown on social media. And that is a that's another topic altogether. And it's all to do with it's is actually what I was gonna do with the podcast on today. I was gonna suggest we did it on like perfectionism and, and how perfectionism leads to procrastination, but we might shelve that one and we'll do it another day. But it it's like, you know, I've had to go look if if people are booking you for what you've done previously which they they are right then as long as you're not showing stuff that you really didn't weren't happy with you know you didn't like that that the, what you put out you know what you created that day or whatever as long as you're putting the stuff out that you are happy with and you know that people have booked you for in the past who cares mm. do you know what i mean you've got you've got to you've got to draw a line under it sometimes and stop overthinking it yeah another topic <laughs> so yeah um back to the regular schedule program <laughs> today <laughs> right so if you're constantly looking outside at what everybody else is doing and letting it bother you you're just gonna you're just gonna have all these questions so you might be asking yourself could could we book more weddings you know you might be asking yourself could mm. Could we book more weddings? Um, but go ask yourself why. Why? Yeah. Why if if you could book more more weddings by doing X, Y, and Z, but why do you want to? Right. Yeah. Do you need to? Yeah. That should be the question. Not could you. It should be do I need to? Yeah. You know, could you earn more money? But why? And I'm, I'm asking these questions because it's like, these are the things that by what, looking at what everybody else is doing, you know, you might be thinking, well, I, oh, I should be doing that or I could do that. Mm-hmm. You know, why, why, why earn more money? Like, honestly, money's great, but it isn't the be all and end all. And ask yourself, do you need to earn more money? Mm-hmm. You know, is it, does it achieve something for you? Is there a reason for you to earn more money? Like, I need to pay the mortgage. I need to put food on the table. I want to buy that new car. Or I want to go on that holiday. But if you don't need those things, if you don't want those things, don't just think I've got to earn more money to keep up with what everybody else is doing. Mm. You know, could I get newer or better equipment? Could I have the latest camera? Could I have, you know, the, the, the newest stuff, the newest mm. drone or whatever? Ask yourself, because you see somebody else is using it, well, is the equipment that you've got doing the job? So yeah. then why do you need it? It doesn't matter if they've got it mm. and they're awesome. You know, mm. they're awesome and they've got this thing. Mm. I, I should have it. I, I want to be awesome too. No, no, probably won't work out like that. So you have to, 
you just have to constantly ask yourself why you know mm. could we be going to loads of cool destinations well <laughs> honestly i see that all the time now me and Lindsay, we've got two mm. kids we 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 are going abroad in a few weeks time and we're really looking forward to it to do a wedding but my god it's stressful and that's one wedding right in the whole year and and we've got the quietest schedule we've ever had mm. since we've been doing this like we've got one wedding in, a, in that month a month of june and we're going abroad right that's like for us that's like crazy we'd usually have you know five to ten weddings in june mm. so but we're still stressing about it because of the stuff that's going on at home and we talked about it in the last episode so it's like why i see people going to all these cool destinations they're always going abroad and, and i want to go abroad and i want to be a cool destination wedding photographer and videographer mm. but why unless that's something that you want to do yeah you know People are doing loads of sh style shoots and workshops and doing all this cool shit and getting all this cool content and putting it all out on social media and they look like they are killing it, you know? And they're getting all this attention and everybody's like... Because let's be honest, you know, the, this 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 world we're in now with the editorial stuff that people are, are getting from workshops and style shoots, it's it's blowing up. It's the thing that gets the most attention because it's, it's almost like unrealistic... It's unrealistic weddings, you know. People don't look like that, and they don't get married in that location, and it doesn't look as fucking tailored to that as that, you know. <laughs> it, it, that's not what weddings usually look like, but that's what people get the attention. So we all want to. Oh, I want some. I want some of that attention, but no, I, I've, I've been doing this for six years, and I, I, I need to do other stuff. I need to be at home. I don't know if I can afford to spend money on a styled shoe and a workshop in Santorini and you know best part of a week to go there mm. can you imagine if I told you I was doing that <laughs> you would not be happy would you <laughs> <laughs> I would think why why what are you what are you trying to why? do you, you don't we've need to do it yeah, and you don't need to because you're getting and you got it we've got plenty of work and it's at the right price and why do you need to yeah there's that, and, and I'll just say that that's not to say that you should just, like I just said, why? We've never done that before. And that's not at all because I believe that you should just remain steadfast in what you've always done. Never ch never try new things, never evolve. Not at all why I believe in that. But just for all the reasons that, that you've just said, if we felt that the business wasn't, um, wasn't going well for us, that we really needed to, to kind of make some changes to get things back on track. I think we'd start a little bit smaller than I'm off for a week <laughs> to Santorini to do a styled shoot because that's the answer. That's, yeah. that's the song. You know, it and, would just, and you're it, right. it would it, just I, be a I, little I bit more well, well considered. Yeah, I agree with you. You've got to adapt. Everyone's got to adapt. Like we're not suggesting you don't. I mean, it'd be the, it'd be the first thing I'd say. You yeah. can't stay still. If you stay still, you will be like, you know, some of the, the people that when we entered the industry were staying still and mm. and, and they, they so not all of them, but some of them then went out of business over the last few years because they just realised they couldn't do it anymore and they couldn't, they couldn't adapt. They weren't adapting to it. Mm. So we're not saying you shouldn't adapt. You should adapt, but also you've got to consider the bigger picture and it comes back to about your own goals yeah that's the thing that we're trying to hone in on here it's not about it's not about you shouldn't do this you shouldn't do that it's not about not adapting it's about what is your goal instead mm -hmm. of looking at what everybody else is doing and going well i want a piece of that or i need to do that mm -hmm. it's what are you trying to achieve yeah i know we're going to say this a couple of times now for the, for the remainder of the podcast but we are all running an individual business here okay Every one of us is in a different place in life, in work. So every one of us has different circumstances, personal and in work. Therefore, we've all got different goals. We all There, there will be similarities in our goals in that we all want to attract attention to the service that we offer. We want to generate leads and convert them to bookings. We want to provide an excellent service and product for our clients. And we want to make a living from this. So from a general perspective, of course, there are similarities. But 
There's lots of nuances they, in there, though. Yeah. Like everything, with all these tiny little details of you saying you want to attract inquiries and bookings, but you don't just want all of the book, all of the inquiries and all the no. bookings. You want you, you know, you might be quite not bothered what you get, but mm-hmm. also you might be if it's mm-hmm. your goal to yeah. attract a specific type of client. Yeah. Because that's your brand. Yeah. That's what you want, like like shooting. Then that's going to be specific. Yeah. That's going to be your goal. Yeah. So that, and that's why you will build a business and shape a business around what makes sense for you. Mm. So that's, that's where your focus and your ability in the circumstances to be able to, to, you know, back in the beginning, be clear about what goals you've got, but then as you kind of navigate through the year, yes, there are slight adaptations that you need to make about the way that you go about your business, but are the things pulling your focus in different directions? Are you being influenced by that FOMO, by outside influences that you're seeing from other places? And is that beneficial or is it detrimental? Yeah. So from our own sort of experience, um, the only way really to feel overall that you are content in what you're doing and not kind of just chasing your competitors or trying to trying to in some way emulate what your your competitors are doing you know being clear about those goals in the first place and trying to maintain a degree of focus on what those are as hard as it is is the i think is the only way to kind of navigate sort of through this yeah because it it will change as you go through the year yeah definitely it will it will Uh, and for for us the most important thing that you should focus on is is your own happiness um because what's the point in like earning money and being busy and being successful Mm -hmm. if it's not making you happy you know that you if you want to do this we use the word sustainability you know a sustainable business we use this all the time it's not, uh, it, you know, you can be, someone can be really successful, but it could be a flash in the pan. It could be short lived because if they're not happy, if they if they put all this effort in and they're doing something and it's working, but it's not really making them happy, you know, whatever, whatever bit of that that is, it's not going to be sustainable. Mm-hmm. Um, and what we want to kind of focus on for the end, towards the end of this, this episode is because we've ta- started off by talking about like, you know, FOMO and, you know, the, the kind of balance of, of looking at what everybody else is doing and thinking, well, how do I achieve that? Or, you know, think about it like this. Everybody has completely different circumstances. They're in a different place, right? We started our business in our mid thirties with two young children. We had a mortgage. We were trying to study at university for degrees as mature students. You know, it was absolute chaos. And if we if we were to compare this to, yeah, and we've made that work, by the way. You know, we, we're here doing this. We're not here saying, we're not preaching saying, we've got it all worked out. We're the best at what we do and blah, blah, blah. You'll know if you've listened to the podcast for a while, that's not the way we approach this. We're here. We're trying to basically be honest and share our experiences and our, you know, the the stuff that we've picked up along the years. We're, we're wanting to share that with you to help you get a head start or help you figure certain things out. Um, but because we've we've that's where we've come from. We've we've got that understanding of it, you know. But if imagine if we'd have started our business in our mid twenties with no ties or little, little ties, less ties and responsibilities. Mm. We didn't have kids. We didn't, you know, we didn't have a a house that we bought and we needed to pay for and, and all the rest of it. How different do you think that would be? We'd be doing those style shoots in Santorini. <laughs> That's where we'd be. Exactly. We we freaking would. And for no for no better reason other than to just be in the sun. <laughs> <laughs> because how awesome would that be? You know. And that's the thing when you when you do see those photographers who are blowing up and they're doing those style shoots in in amazing places. They probably. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying that they all don't have ties or families or whatever. But they probably are younger than 
us, you know, and they probably have got less to tie them down. They mm -hmm. probably have got more flexibility. So, you know, what do you think it would have been like if we'd been able to do it differently? How, how could or would we have been able to operate the business differently? You know, if you think about being mid twenties to when we actually started 10 mm. years later than that. And we, we not only that we'd come from, we come from jobs where we got paid. All right. We got decent salaries in our previous career. So it was like, you know, like I, basically I remember it was just a case of, and this, we talked about this, but it was, we have to make this much money within yeah. a certain amount of time. Like within a couple of years, we had to get the salary back up to more or less where it was when we left our jobs yeah so so straight that was, away that was straight away it was graft time yeah. and it was like we're not doing any bullshit that doesn't make business sense yeah but i i, I think we would have been more of a carefree entrepreneurial approach to it and we would have taken more risks oh so I many think. more risks and, uh, i mean yeah. we've taken we've taken some risks along taken, the way some, made absolutely. some right mistakes taken, but. made some big life decisions some big big changes to to our life and our circumstances but yeah i think having the not but we could have jumped those, on stuff couldn't oh we? yeah we could yeah. like when you see the, the could thing could have plowed money into different things you know a, 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 just i feel yeah bigger risk takers more carefree about things whereas although i feel like we've taken risks in the steps that that we've we've taken left a profession like you've said gone back to study again um w with a family those are risks in in their own right but at the same time they were c very calculated risks yeah and they, um, yeah there was a whole thing behind it and it was it was very strategic yeah and we came from a strategic background so we 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 did put a lot of strategy in place with things so it wasn't as it wasn't as like knee jerk not knee jerk but it wasn't as like passion based if you like like i really want to do this creative thing and, yeah and i'm because i think that that's what i want need to do it was always like right will this thing likely lead to making more money and building the business yeah and that's what we based it on but can you imagine if we were in the mid-20s and think about the time that we could have put into this you mm. know instead of having to balance the university that was <laughs> we really should talk about that in full in one day because like, if you're ever thinking about going back to university as a mature student right well, you know that's a good thing to talk about don't do it um yeah, there's no <laughs> no freshers week <laughs> yeah there were no, no freshers, freshers week for you it, it were really not that fun um so like the time that you could put into it though you know you've got no kids you've got no ties it's all you can be selfish as you want time that you could have put in the energy that you would have had, the uh, you know the flexibility to go, you know wherever you wanted, any time, be able to take more risk financially, you know, not have to prioritize like we just said, prioritize mm -hmm. making money. And you might, I think we might have seen the world differently as well. You know, have a different perspective on things because we didn't have mm -hmm. children and we didn't, we we hadn't sort of had the same life experiences and and had to think about these different things that could or might happen you yeah. know it, it, there's less consequence there would have been less consequences of of yeah fucking it up yeah and i think at that point as well you're less uh you've got less of an eye on the future in terms of financial stability yeah, more on, and like let's and go more on, let's do this <laughs> <laughs> yeah so you know just to kind of summarize all that when you're comparing your businesses, when you're getting your FOMO and you're sat there, you're looking at social media or you talk, maybe you're talking in person to another another vendor, another photographer, filmmaker, whatever, at a wedding or, you know, if you, if you meet up at places with people, just think, you know, it's, everyone's in a different place and it's just not mm. worth you're not comparing apples to apples mm. and you need to remember that. You need to remember that whatever somebody's telling you for a start might not be a hundred percent, you know, true. Not saying people lie, but sometimes people might kind of make things sound better than they actually are, mm. you know, depending it's not, it's people sometimes do that, but also you're not comparing the equals and, and their, their situation might be completely different. Um, so you've got to remember to do you. Um, everyone's in their own place and mm. you've got to understand what your goals are and, you know, 
try and keep the focus on that. Mm. Own that. Own it. Own it. <laughs> okay, well, that's going to be us for this week. So we we hope that you've enjoyed listening to us this week. Um, probably set a new record there for, for being <laughs> our shortest one. <laughs> but I think, yeah, it would be... Well, sorry, I hope that this has kind of encouraged you to have a little think about the, the balance that you've got in your life and how influential is that FOMO on what you do in terms of your business activities and and how focused you can remain on your goals um we'd love to hear from you again so if you did have any thoughts on this week's episode and you didn't want to share any of that with us then please get in touch with us uh, by dming us on instagram please don't forget to rate and review us wherever you listen to your podcasts and um, we really do appreciate it and it helps us to keep this podcast going so thank you ever so much for for tuning in or for listening have a great week and we look forward to speaking to you again soon cheers guys bye bye